Hosting the Oscars is maybe the most prestigious hosting job in Hollywood because you're having to essentially host a big party, but with gigantic stars. Now, most people, when they meet a star, they're totally tongue-tied and don't know what to say and make a fool of themselves. So I have to try and not make a fool of myself to all of the stars at the same time. I'm super starstruck and I'm terrible in situations where I have to interact with famous people. I don't know why. I'm from New Mexico, small town New Mexico. So even though I've been doing this for a long time and I'm able to, and I've met and hung out with a lot of people and worked with people, still when I see people that are famous, uh, it, it, it rattles me. But I am in the unique position to talk to them with purpose. Normally, when you're backstage at an award show and you're not the host, then you may be bothering them. But as the host, I get to come up and, you know, shoot the breeze with anybody. You kind of get an all-access pass that way. When I host an award show, I really like to be as involved as possible. Almost in a producerial way, not by title, but just, I don't want to show up and be told what to say and then just read my lines and go home. I really want to know, it's just the way I think. I want to know who's presenting and who's teamed up with who and the pacing of the show and the timing of it. So yeah, I've been really involved. The writing especially, I get to choose a writing team and I've chosen people that I've worked with before that I know are funny uh, long-term and also funny in the moment. And then we've hired on some other writers that I think are really smart. I think the comedy level needs to be pretty smart uh, for the Oscars because um, you don't want to just do kind of easy laugh jokes. So that's where the pressure is right now, is creating content that you think will be uh, relevant. There is something wonderful about having friends over, making some cheese dip. I call it queso. And uh, wearing sweats and filling out an Oscar ballot, you know, and, and uh, drinking a lot and laughing at the famous people. I can't do that this year. I don't think so. I could have cheese dip backstage and I'll probably be drunk for most of it. I could put sweatpants on under my tux. I think we're onto something. I sure love Johnny Carson. Um, and he was such a quintessential host and so recognizable and recognized for doing what he did that he kind of just got to go out there and tell some jokes and start the show. Um, and then I watched Billy Crystal who left a real indelible mark in my mind because he was kind of a song and dance man even though he was a movie star. So he would come out and do those fantastic uh, videos before the show started and then he would come out and sing about the different the different movies that are nominated and the different people within them and kind of have a big da-da moment that everyone loved and then he'd start the show. So I can't really do that unless I'm repeating kind of him. Um, but I don't want to just go out there and stand there and tell some jokes. So. I hope to be a little Carson, a little Crystal, and uh, a lot of gold. I tried to make a crystal to gold joke, and Carson would never have done that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna wear just yet. It's easier for a guy to host a show like that because costume changes aren't really required. If I was a female, I think I'd have more interest in showing off different looks all the time as you come out. There's something cool about that. But I don't know, as, as a guy in a tux, you can kind of pick a nice, well-fitted tux and own it. That being said, there's lots of really nice tuxes, so who knows? Maybe I'll go black to gray to white fuchsia. Never fuchsia. No matter what anyone tells you, never fuchsia. When I was a kid, I always wanted to win an Oscar. 
I think I was more the holding up a brush in the mirror, you know, saying who I was gonna thank. I never had any idea that my life path would lead me to being the one welcoming people and potentially singing a song. Song and dance numbers in award shows are tricky because you have to, you have to create it and honor the medium. Uh, and movies, by nature, are done on film and they're much more cinematic. So a song and dance number doesn't necessarily jive with what the people who are being honored are used to performing. At the Tonys, it's, it's easy, because they all do song and dance numbers eight times a week. And on the Emmys, it's kind of fun, too, because it's TV, and there's lots of variety and lots of uh, exciting things to do. The Oscars, I think, is much more serious. So if we're going to do any kind of singing or dancing or, or numbers, it needs to be focused on a point of view that is smart and um, not too much razzmatazz.